is it better to just stop at the thoracic uh, levels or should you go down to the lumbar level so that you are ensuring a good uh, correction and also a correction which is uh, maintained over a long time. So before we talk of this, I think we all must be sure of what is the type of curve that we are talking about. Now, in the King and Mose classification, we had a group which was described as King's type 2 and this is a group where there is an S-shaped curve in which both the thoracic and the lumbar curves cross the midline. But the most important thing is that it is not a double major curve because the magnitude of the Cobb angle of the thoracic curve is larger than that of the lumbar curve on standing ground geogram. And the lumbar curve is more flexible when you do either a side bending film or a traction film. So the thoracic is more structural, more rigid and of a greater magnitude than the lumbar curve. So that is the most important thing. It is the same principle which defines the Lenke's 1C curve because here again the most important is the thoracic curve is the primary curve more larger, more structural, more rigid and the lumbar curve is more flexible. Uh, uh, so this is the group that we are talking about and whether a selective thoracic fusion is better. A uh, typical case would be like the, this girl who is 13 year old, no major problem but if you see here, her thoracic is 55, the lumbar is much more smaller at 36, there is, uh, she is positive for thoracic kyphosis. But what is most important is that you find that the thoracic curve reduces only to 40 on the side bending film, whereas the lumbar curve shows a more highly flexible uh, curve from 36 to 14, and the flexibility ratio is 2.3, which means the lumbar curve is really very flexible. And so where is the controversy? I mean, you have some of these uh, publications which show that selective thoracic fusion is the procedure of choice for properly selected King 2 and Linky 1C and curve. But on the other hand, there are also other publications which show that there is a maximum variation in the protocol in Linky's type 1C curves. There are many surgeons who are divided on their opinion of what to do. And selected thoracic fusion was performed as a preference only in 49% of patients over day. There is also this uh, collective information that comes that says that the maximum amount of decompensation in follow-up was noticed in Lenke 1C curves treated by selective thoracic fusion. So obviously it means that there is a lot of uh, uncertainty in the mind of surgeons worldwide. And also, if you do not do a proper selection, then you can have a decompensation over a period of time. So, we need to be sure that the thoracic curves are chosen properly. This was not a major problem in the time of uh, King's uh, period of time, where you were only using a distractive force, you are not using instruments which allowed you to derotate very effectively. So even though you can find that this has not been corrected properly, there is a, a partial correction of thoracic curve and there is a persistent lumbar curve but the patient looks completely uh, compensated. On the other hand, when you go on to a situation where a similar curve is treated by a selective thoracic fusion, you find that you can see that uh, there is a more uh, flexibility of the lumbar curve. But when you go in, put in pedicle screws and use sublaminar wires and you over correct the thoracic curve, you find that there is a great decompensation of the lumbar curve. So you need to be very clear in your mind as to what are we going to, how are we going to select and how are we going to avoid this decompensation. I think there are three principles before you do a selective thoracic fusion. Number one, ascertain that the curve is indeed a 1C curve and not a 3C which means that it is a primary thoracic curve and not a double major curve and then you will have to look at the clinical and radiological suitability for a selective thoracic fusion and during your surgery you should avoid two common mistakes that happen when you do a selective thoracic fusion. So let us see this one. This is 1C curve and this is 3C curve. 
Now, if I remove the labeling below, both of them look exactly the same. And here comes the problem. I mean, you can make a mistake between 1C and 3C. So the difference comes in not what you see in the primary radiograph, but it comes in your traction films and assessment of flexibility over here. Now, how do you find out whether the lumbar curve is structural or not? Keith talked about it earlier, but the definition is that anything that is above 25 degrees on a bending film, then it is structural. So if your lumbar curve still stays more than 25, then probably you have to take it as a double major curve and you should not go ahead and do uh, this. Secondly, there must be a difference between the thoracic and the lumbar curve. Now here you find a situation where there is a 49 degrees thoracic curve and a 48 degrees lumbar curve. But when you do a traction film, you can find that both are equally flexible. I mean that the lumbar curve is not more flexible than the thoracic curve. And then you go ahead and do a selective thoracic fusion, you find that the lumbar curve completely decompensates. So you need to be sure that you are actually dealing with a 1C curve and not a 3C curve. There is other radiographic criteria and clinical criteria which will be uh, useful. For the radiographic criteria, you need to look at the Cobb angle, flexibility, apical segment translation and apical segment ro rotation. In the assessment of all these, when you compare the thoracic and the lumbar curve, there is a magic figure of 1.2. I mean, the thoracic curve must be more than the lumbar curve by a magic figure of 1.2 in everything. Now, if this is there, this is what the Bridwell's criteria also said. If the Cobb angle is more than 1.2, if the apical vertebral rotation is more than 1.2, if the apical vertebral rotation is more than 1.2, and your flexibility is more than 1.2, and then there is no thoracolumbar junctional kyphosis, then this is a case which is good for uh, <coughs> uh, selective thoracic fusion. Now, Newton has published this and it's a very good article and he found that up to 33% of lanky 1C curve were not good for selective thoracic fusion and his criteria for uh, a contraindication was a large preoperative lumbar curve, a greater displacement of the lumbar apical vertebra and in his opinion in that series, uh, the magnitude of the lumbar apical vertebral deviation was found to be a significant factor where if there is a more deviation from the central sacral line, then these patients are not uh, good for this. You also need to look at clinically and if you find a patient has got a large lumbar uh, inclination, there is a lumbar hump, then these patients again have found to be having uh, poorer results with uh, selective thoracic fusion. So if you have a lumbar curve which is greater than 50 degrees, if there is a large paraspinal lumbar prominence and your lumbar apical vertebra is greater than 3 centimeters away, then again apply caution before you will decide for a selective thoracic fusion. Now once these criteria have been done and you have chosen the patient for a selective thoracic fusion, you still can make two mistakes which can decompensate and you have to avoid these two wrong techniques. Now one is the lower level of instrumentation. Now when you, this is an ideal case for uh, selective thoracic fusion, but you can make this worse and this is one of our very early cases by going a little lower down and going to closer or to the apex of the lumbar vertebra. Now, I was surprised actually, I would like to ask George also about this because in his lecture he mentioned that he wouldn't have an hesitation to go to L2, but as a rule that we always stop at L1. I mean, we never transgress L1 because L2 grows into the lumbar vertebra and we have had a few cases where this has happened and they all come with uh, huge uh, decompensations laterally. You can see at uh, two years she was a medical student and this was a little bit embarrassing so she decompensated quite a lot and we need uh, and this is what looks like uh, radiologically and clinically and we had to extend it up to L4. So you have to avoid getting your lower instrumental level into the lumbar vertebra, lumbar curve. 
and that's very uh, important so uh, don't do not go too far and um, you can see here if you have a patient like this and if it is l1 it's okay but if you go to l2 and then you get the whole thing uh, corrected too much then the whole thing decompensates and you can find that your uh, truncal deviation comes and that's uh, sometimes called the most ultimate sin of going out the second technical uh, mistake that one can do is not to over correct the thoracic uh, curve now when you are using uh, pedicle screws and if you are using all the modern derotation techniques and correction techniques and also you apply a lot of power you can correct the thoracic curve uh, very well and then you will find again that the thoracic curve becomes straight and then the lumbar curve starts uh, uh, decompensating so if the posterior pedicle screw fixation is used over correction or excessive straightening must be avoided and make sure that you don't completely derotate now this is a very good uh, picture which shows that you should not correct your thoracic curve you can see that it could have been easily over corrected more but if you have over corrected then the lumbar curve will uh, decompensate never make your thoracic curve uh, too straight when you do a selective thoracic fusion you should uh, uh, be careful not to over correct so the take home points are uh, before you think of selective thoracic fusion make sure that it is actually 1c and not 3c curve and rule out that it is a double major curve do not over correct the thoracic curve beyond the flexibility of the lumbar curve for example if the lumbar curve is 40 degrees and then it becomes 20 degrees in the side bending film then we should not correct the thoracic curve to less than 20 that would uh, make it difficult for compensation then do not extend beyond the stable vertebra and do not uh, have too aggressive derotation uh, maneuvers thank you very much for uh, listening oh, thank you